It was the biggest ship ever built in its time, and it was supposed to be unsinkable. But within days of steaming out on its first voyage in 1912, the Titanic was gone beneath the relentless waves of the North Atlantic Ocean. And of its more than 2,200 passengers and crew, only 706 survived that dreadful night. Would a smaller ship have fared any better in the same situation? Did the size of the iceberg truly matter in the end? Was it a mistake for the ship to change course at the last minute as it tried to avoid impact? These are three questions that have people pondering, what if? We do know that Titanic was considered an engineering marvel in its day. Designed by Thomas Andrews for the British shipping company White Star Line, it was just over 880 feet long and 175 feet tall. Built with abundant space for 840 staterooms, a swimming pool, a squash court, a gym, and two dining rooms. But it was below deck that one of its most impressive new features could be found. Titanic's hull was divided into 16 compartments designed to be watertight. Up to four of these compartments could take on water in the event of a breach, with the remaining 12 helping to keep the damaged ship afloat. It was thanks to these compartments that the ship was regarded as unsinkable. Rumor has it that Philip Frank, White Star Line's vice president, even declared, There is no danger that Titanic will sink. The boat is unsinkable, and nothing but inconvenience will be suffered by the passengers. On April 14, 1912, that proved to be mistaken when Titanic struck an iceberg, as ice ripped along the ship's hull. Several of those watertight compartments ruptured. It took only two and a half hours for Titanic to sink. Did the size of the iceberg that hit Titanic seal its fate? Would a bigger or smaller iceberg have made any difference? Icebergs come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. They are pieces of ice that have broken away from glaciers or ice shelves in the Arctic and Antarctic and are now wandering across the ocean until they eventually melt. One of the tallest icebergs ever found would have easily dwarfed Titanic. Discovered in 1957, it was 550 feet high. That's close to the height of the Washington Monument. Imagine ramming into something that big. Smaller icebergs, though, can turn out just as dangerous. Some are the size of houses and called bergy bits. Others, closer to the size of a car, are called growlers. These can be much harder for ships and boats to locate, making them more difficult to avoid. And, though smaller, they can produce a lot of damage when hit. It's also critical to recall that icebergs are always bigger than they seem, with the majority of their mass lurking below the ocean surface. In fact, over 80% of an iceberg's volume is underwater. Most of its sharp, jagged edges cannot be seen. Roam too close, and you risk damaging your ship's hull. Because Titanic had little notice of its impending doom, a smaller iceberg, struck at the same angle, could still have been enough to bring that mighty ship down. Now, it's possible that had the iceberg been larger, it would have been spotted sooner. Titanic might have had time to alter course and avoid the impact. But missing that one iceberg would not have guaranteed Titanic safety. It was traveling in a dangerous stretch of the Atlantic called Iceberg Alley. It's located 250 miles east and southeast of Newfoundland, Canada. Behind one iceberg, there could be another. And another after that. And so the crew on board had to remain very attentive to avoid several potential collisions, not just one. A smaller ship might have been better suited for the trip. Titanic's size was certainly a challenge when it came to steering. In fact, it had just left her dock in Southampton when it nearly collided with another smaller ocean liner, the SS New York, missing it by just two feet. The gigantic steamship was obviously not made for maneuvering quickly in tight quarters. A ship that size required time and space to change course. But when it comes to ships versus icebergs, a ship's size doesn't always matter. The Islander was a steamship designed to travel the inside passage in Alaska. In the summer of 1901, it struck an iceberg, which tore a hole in the front portion or bow of the ship. 
The vessel did not sink right away, and the crew tried to steer it to safety. Ultimately, its bow completely submerged, and its stern was lifted up and out of the water. It didn't take much longer before the ship sank completely. Of the 168 passengers and crew members, 128 survived, and $3 million in gold was lost. Islander had a 240-foot hull, making it almost a quarter of the size of Titanic. And that smaller size didn't seem to be much help in preventing a collision with an iceberg. And then there was the Hans Hedtoff in 1959. Also known as the Little Titanic or the Danish Titanic, it was referred to as the safest ship afloat. It was 272 feet long, with 95 people on board. Much like the real Titanic, the Hans Hedtoff was specifically engineered to handle most of what the sea could throw its way. Along with its double steel bottom, it also had an armored bow and seven watertight compartments. How could such a ship sink? But it could, and it did. It was on its first voyage, returning to Copenhagen, when it ran into trouble. On January 30th, it hit an iceberg. An SOS was sent, but when the Johannes Cross arrived to help, the Hans Hedtoff was nowhere to be found. The only evidence of the ship's existence was a life belt that was washed ashore in Iceland nine months later. Again, the ship's smaller size didn't work in its favor. A smaller size of Titanic wouldn't have guaranteed a safe voyage in 1912. The final what-if concerns the last-minute choice when the iceberg was spotted and the alarm sounded. First, Titanic could attempt a complete stop. But this wasn't an option, as the ship needed a half a mile to come to a halt, and the iceberg was a mere 900 feet away. Second, the Titanic could attempt to avoid the iceberg by steering away from it. This is what the captain ordered, but the attempt was unsuccessful, resulting in a deep gash across the ship's hull. The final option? To hit the iceberg head-on. Would this have made any difference? The answer is an intriguing maybe. Some think a head-on collision would have saved Titanic. In this scenario, the collision would have limited the damage to the very front of the ship. Instead of the iceberg tearing through the hull and compromising several of the watertight compartments, only four of the compartments would have been breached. This meant the others could do their job of keeping Titanic afloat. The ship could be stuck, unable to move, but it would remain above water until help arrived. This would provide a ship like Carpathia enough time to reach the scene of the accident and bring the people on board to safety. One of the Titanic's designers, Edward Wilding, made a similar claim during an inquiry into the sinking. He argued that most people would have survived a head-on crash, and that Titanic itself would not have sunk. Others disagree, though. First, the special bulkheads on Titanic were designed specifically to protect the ship against collisions with other vessels, not with icebergs. These compartments would crumple upon impact, absorbing some of the force while the other ship absorbed the rest. Though the damage would still be extensive, the remaining bulkheads would keep the ship afloat. But an iceberg does not have the same flex in a collision as you would experience with another ship. Most of the force would be absorbed by Titanic, resulting in greater damage to the ship. Even worse, the impact would be carried through the full length of the ship. Rivets would burst, seams would tear, the compartments would quickly flood, and the ship would sink even faster, resulting in fewer survivors. In any case, as with most what-ifs, we'll never really know the answer. As tragic as Titanic's first and last voyage was, it did result in changes that helped make venturing out to sea much safer. Findings from hearings on the disaster led to the creation of the International Ice Patrol, or ICC, in 1914, an organization that tracks icebergs in the Atlantic and Arctic Oceans to ensure vessels in the area can avoid them. In the US and Britain, ships were obligated to carry enough lifeboats to accommodate every person aboard. Regular lifeboat drills were made mandatory. And finally, the bulkheads on ships were made higher to keep water out, and bottoms were stretched to create double hulls, helping make the compartments truly waterproof. 
There's no denying that Titanic was a terrible tragedy. But the lessons learned from that night to remember has helped prevent many more.